A deadly crash under the investigation on the south side. Why police believe drowsiness may have played a factor. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon, San Antonio police trying to find this man. He is missing. They say 75-year-old Brian Robert Messett was last seen yesterday in the 11,000 block of I-35 North. We're told he does have a medical condition. At the time he was last seen, he was wearing a gray shirt with a circle on it, cargo shorts, and a bucket hat. Also driving a white 2012 Subaru Legacy. That license plate number, KXR692. If you can help find authorities or help authorities find this man, you are asked to call SAPD's missing persons unit. San Antonio police say that drowsy driving may be the cause of a deadly crash on the south side. So they believe a driver fell asleep before slamming into a tree early this morning on South Azar's more near Hunter's Pond. Katrina Weber tells us his co-worker had to make that sad discovery. San Antonio police give a thorough look at a crash scene on South Sarsamora near Hunter's Pond, which another driver had only glimpsed at in passing. But they say that person immediately recognized the crash car as one belonging to a co-worker at the nearby Toyota plant and called 911. They had just finished their work shift, believe they have a 12-hour work shift, and just heading home at the end of the day. The driver's life came to an end in this crash. Shortly after 6.30 this morning, his car left the roadway and nearly wrapped around a tree. Police say as far as they can tell, it looks like this is the only car that was involved in the crash. They believe the driver simply fell asleep at the wheel. We suspect that he might have been just tired, just tired at the end of the shift, just going home, that's it. Firefighters had their work cut out for them as they tried to cut the man free from the wreckage. But police say in the end, no one could save him. The damage to the vehicle was like so severe for anybody to have survived. Police say the man who died was 39 years old. While investigating the crash, they shut down the northbound side of South Sarsamora for at least two hours. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And this new Toyota confirming for us that victim was not a Toyota employee. Toyota officials say he worked for one of the supplier companies. This noon, still no word on what caused a fire that forced people from their homes on the west side overnight. That two alarm blaze broke out at an apartment complex in the 7900 block of Piper's Creek. That's near Calabria. When crews got there just after one in the morning, they say that the fire was showing from a second story balcony of one of the apartment buildings. People living in the six units were displaced. They have been relocated to other apartments and somehow no one was hurt. And more flames on the northwest side caused the mess at a different apartment complex. Now, this all started around 11 last night. This was on Loop 410 near Bandera Road. Crews who arrived to the scene, they discovered flames in the building, that building having a fitness center, a laundry room, and office space. Luckily, no one inside the building at the time. No injuries reported. Crews were able to put out the flames quickly. The cause, though, still under investigation. A San Antonio man now facing some legal troubles after police say he fired shots at his girlfriend's car. Take a look at 28 year old Paul Riojas. According to an arrest affidavit, it happened yesterday outside of his home. Police say that the woman was trying to get away when he fired the shots, hitting her car several times. Fortunately, she was not hurt. He is facing a charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. An escaped inmate from Missouri back in jail today after being arrested here in San Antonio. So earlier this month, a state warrant was issued for Lance Stevens after investigators say he and two other inmates allegedly escaped from a jail in Missouri. Investigators figured out that Stevens was hiding out here in Texas. He was then caught at a hotel on West Military Drive in the Alamo City. Stevens currently at the Carnes County Detention Facility as he waits extradition to Missouri. He is facing multiple charges. We want to bring you the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. FDA advisors meeting today to consider two vaccines for children as young as six months old. This comes as the country currently is averaging about 100,000 new cases a day. Many states reporting an increase in new infections as well. ABC's Rena Roy has more. Some of America's youngest could soon be protected against the coronavirus. An FDA advisory panel meeting today to review data on Moderna and Pfizer's shots for kids between six months and five years old. We have to be careful that we don't become numb to the number of pediatric deaths because of the overwhelming number of older deaths here. And vaccine preventable deaths are ones that we would like to uh, try 
uh, to do something about. The decision would impact 18 million in that age group, the last group of Americans still not eligible for a COVID vaccine. The FDA says both vaccines preliminarily appear to be safe and effective, producing similar antibodies against the Omicron variant as the adult vaccines. Pfizer is given as a three-shot series and Moderna's is two doses. This meeting comes just a day after the same panel unanimously voted in favor of Moderna's vaccine for six to seven Year-olds. With respect to the benefits outweighing the risk, I believe the answer is clear and certainly very supportive. New COVID-19 cases are going up in parts of the country. About half of U.S. wastewater sites are currently reporting increases. The CDC estimating Omicron subvariants BA4 and BA5 have tripled in the last two weeks. Scientists closely monitoring this uptick. And back to those shots for America's youngest, the CDC will have to give the official green light before they're authorized for emergency use. The White House saying we could see shots in arms as early as next Tuesday. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. This noon, loved ones of the victims in the deadly shooting at Robb Elementary continue to say their final goodbyes. Today, many taking part in a prayer service and visitation for Layla Salazar. Her father says each morning he drove her to school, they would play Sweet Child of Mine as they would sing along together. Tomorrow morning, his 11-year-old daughter will be laid to rest. Well, an artist that uses Legos as his medium, he created digital Lego portraits by hand of all 21 victims of the Robb Elementary School shooting. Canvas prints of all of those portraits were delivered to each of the families of the victims. The artist is Sean Kenny. He is a one-time Texan who now lives in Amsterdam. He started working on this project the day after the shooting in Uvalde. Those portraits are hand-drawn digital Lego portraits. So he says each one took about two to three hours to draw. He created three each day, often working late into the night. And he says it was heartbreaking to spend hours staring at the photos of each of those children. And he says he broke down into tears while drawing each and every single one. I was, of course, incredibly sad. I was frustrated. I was upset. I was I felt hopeless, um, you know, and, and I, I don't know. I had all, all these sort of things in my brain that I couldn't get out with words. And so as an artist, you know, when when you, you have no words, you just make things. And so that's what I do. And, and so to express myself, I make things. After the portraits were shared online, they went viral. Families then contacted him to get the portraits. He arranged for them to be printed on canvas, donated and delivered to the families of those victims. Lots of cloud cover today, and that's going to help us with temperatures slightly cooler today, but the heat comes right back uh, tomorrow and into the weekend. Look at that forecast coming up. Golden State now just one win away from getting another ring. Later in sports, Andrew's joining us. He has more from both Warriors and Celtics ahead of possibly the decisive Game 6. Say it ain't so. Go Celtics. <laughs> a program is giving local folks a chance to share their stories, how playwrights and artists are getting an opportunity to practice this craft. A local program giving San Antonio playwrights and artists an opportunity to practice their craft and develop some new plays. The program is at the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center. It's helping San Antonians tell their stories and then share them with the community. Tiffany Huertas has a look at how the program is making dreams come true. From a script to a stage. After submitting his play to different places for six years, Cesar Duenas is now seeing it come to life. And your old pillowcases are his head and hands. La Niña Girasol was a play inspired by a story that I wrote for my niece and nephew for them to never forget their family lines and where they came from. These sunflowers that are female ancestors. Cesar is part of Teatro Salon, a program at the Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center in the West Side, giving San Antonians an opportunity to create plays. It had a staged reading first here with three other plays. Then it was selected to be produced. This is the third major production developed thanks to this program, allowing San Antonians to share their story. Cesar hopes this program continues to change lives. My hope would be that it impacts them to start telling their stories, to start writing. With his play opening next week, 
Cesar feels thankful to have this opportunity. I can't express enough how honored I was to have somebody else say, wow, your story is good enough for us to like and produce meant everything to me. Dale, come on, let's go. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. There's going to be two morning performances. They're going to be offered on Wednesday and Thursday. That's June 22nd and 23rd at 11 a.m. And there will also be two evening performances on Friday and Saturday, June 24th and 25th. They start at 7 o'clock. All the performances will take place at the historic Guadalupe Theater on Guadalupe Street. All right, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 86 degrees right now, and I, I've been kind of complaining to Justin throughout the day. I was like, Justin, I need the sunshine, and he had a good rebuttal. He's like, yeah, but if there's less sun out there, it's cooler. True. Hey, and look at the numbers right now. It's been a while oh since. Oh, my goodness. Been. We're not even at 90. I know. <laughs> oh, wow. Mid-80s. It, 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 the clouds are making a difference, and I do think we stay below 100 degrees today. So there's the good news. We've also had a couple sprinkles here and there. Nothing significant rain-wise. But uh, there have been a few returns on radar. The aquifer actually is up a little bit today. Surprisingly, it's up two tenths of a foot to 636.4, but we're still in bad situation there. And the pollen counts just molds. They're low, but we do have a plume of Saharan dust headed our way. It's already here, but it thickens up a bit tomorrow. We'll have a look at that forecast and a look ahead to the weekend coming up. Well, welcome back. So the good point that we're going to bring up is that it's not even 90 degrees. Right. This is not a mistake, right, no. Justin? This no. the, is an accurate reading. We have not seen this since maybe April. It's a little gloomy out there, though. Uh, it, well, it is, but, it, you know, the sun's not beating <laughs> down on you. We don't have the, the 90s, you know, popping up already. So that, I think it's a good thing. Uh, we're going to see quite a bit of cloud cover at least next couple of hours before maybe the sun pops out. Uh, a little bit later and the sun's popped out from time to time today, but you look at the radar and surprisingly, yes, we do have a few light returns working your way through. We mentioned yesterday we have that swirl off to the west and it brought in a little bit of energy. This probably is not reaching the ground. There could be a few sprinkles. We had a few reported earlier here around San Antonio. There are some light returns, so don't be surprised if you see a drop or two on your windshield. Uh, I know it doesn't really help our cause when it comes to the uh, drought situation, but it is, again, keeping temperatures down. 85 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 68, and we have a south-southeast chilly breeze at 13 miles per hour. Temperatures in the 80s for the most part here around San Antonio. Now, where there's more sun, we are looking at low 90s in places like Criso Springs and Catula, Del Rio up to 91, 90 in Gonzales. A little closer look here around Bear County, 83 in Holotus, 84 Bull Verde, 81 right now. Burning stage, not bad. Wind gusts, they are there. We've uh, gusted to about 22 at Stinson, gusting to 20 in Bull Verde. And these numbers have been fluctuating a little bit, but uh, I think we'll see gusts 20 to 25 throughout the rest of today. And then finally, tomorrow, the winds will die down some. Now this picture, it looks like there's a lot of rain out there. There's really not. Uh, this is showing probably some upper level moisture that's not reaching the ground. But that upper level moisture that those high clouds are working their way through. And again, that's scouring out the sun some. And you see the, the swirl in the atmosphere right there. That is that area of low pressure that is working north. And we showed you yesterday and it, it got close enough to help reduce some of that cloud cover. So here's our forecast. As we get into the afternoon, showing some more light returns. So we'll keep a 10% chance of rain in the forecast. Those clouds will eventually move out. We'll see more sun tomorrow and some warmer temperatures too. We're probably back in the 100s tomorrow. So this is just a one day thing. Uh, 95 degrees by 2 p.m. We'll call it partly cloudy at 3 o'clock, 96. Topping out somewhere in the upper 90s. If these clouds stick around a little longer, we may be able to, may be able to lower that temperature even a little bit more. And then this evening we drop down into the 80s, 84 by 11 p.m. with partly cloudy skies. The other big story tomorrow will be the dust. Saharan dust will, again, it's already here, but it will thicken up a little bit tomorrow into the, uh, we'll call it dense category. You'll, you'll notice it some. Um, if you have allergies, may affect you a little bit, or if you're allergic to dust, or if you have lung related issues, be aware. Tomorrow is probably when we'll see it at its thickest and then it starts to come down a little bit over the weekend. High pressure still in control for the most part and it moves around a little bit, 
but it's still controlling our weather and keeping us plenty warm, not just us, but a large portion of the country. We do need to check in on the tropics. So we have one area here that the Hurricane Center is watching. We've been following this it's pretty close to Central America, though, so it's having a hard time really developing. And we have a new hurricane out in the Pacific that is Blas. It's moving away from land, though. It shouldn't have any effect on uh, Mexico or have any effect uh, bringing any moisture into our neck of the woods. This system here, the Hurricane Center is giving it a 30% chance of development. So they've lowered it a little bit, the, the probability of that happening. But if it were, and we, we have some spaghetti plots here, now these aren't going to be super accurate because we don't have a, a center of circulation or a, really anything that's developed just yet. But generally speaking, some of that moisture will work its way up towards Cancun by Saturday and then probably work almost due west into Mexico. So we miss out on this moisture too because high pressure just basically pushes everything away from us. So this is the extended forecast. 101 tomorrow with some of those hazy conditions because of the dust. 100 Friday, 100 Saturday, 100 for Father's Day and Juneteenth on Sunday. 101 Monday, a little bit of added cloud cover potentially on Tuesday with a high of 99. Back to the triple digits. Let's enjoy today, shall we? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Justin. All right, so we're dealing with kind of like drought-like conditions-ish. So, Steph Curry. <laughs> that's a good That's a good segue. Uh, yeah, Steph Curry was over 9 in Game 5, and somehow the Warriors still managed to find a way to win. They did it because Andrew Wiggins had one of the games of his life. When we come back, we'll talk about his performance and what it means to him personally. Plus, Dak Prescott in a much better position this season compared to last year. The Cowboys minicamp got that too. Next. feels good, but we haven't done anything yet, and the mission still is the same, and we're all eager to get to Boston and, you know, play a great game on Thursday. The job isn't done for the Warriors, but they can close out the Celtics tomorrow night in Game 6 of the NBA Finals in Big Board Sports. So the Golden State Warriors are one win away from their fourth NBA title since 2015. Steph Curry had been the star of the show offensively through the first four games of this series, but he had a rare off night in game five, finishing over nine from distance. Instead, Andrew Wiggins took over down the stretch, putting up a team high 26 points and 13 rebounds to lead a comeback victory and take control of the series. Wiggins has been traded twice, first as the number one overall draft pick in 2014 by the Cleveland Cavaliers, then later by the Minnesota Timberwolves in 2020. So after eight years as a relative journeyman, did Wiggins believe he performed like he just did in the NBA Finals? You know, it was something I've dreamt about for sure, you know, uh, being in the league and, you know, this is the ultimate, ultimate stage. It um, doesn't get bigger than this. Um, so I was out there just being aggressive and, you know, it was a, it was a good game. Meantime, the Celtics find themselves with their backs against the wall as they head home for Game 6. In Game 5, Boston actually erased a double-digit deficit to take the lead late in the third quarter, but their 18 turnovers proved costly. How confident are they that they can force a decisive Game 7? I've said it before, we, you better be confident, right? Um, you know, we ain't got to win two in one day. We just got to win one game um, on Thursday. And... We've been in this situation before, so, you know, it's not over. We just got to win on Thursday, and that's all we got to worry about right now. Tip-off for Game 6 is at 8 on Thursday. If necessary, Game 7 is Sunday in Golden State at 7. All games right here, live on KSAT 12. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Day two of the Cowboys' three-day minicamp is underway at the Star in Frisco, and quarterback Dak Prescott is a full participant. That wasn't the case this time last year as he was steadily working himself back from a devastating compound fracture and dislocation of his right ankle. How does he feel on the field so far? I go into each offseason um, trying, trying to be a better player and person than I was the, the year before. And so I, at this stage, at this point, I definitely feel like I've accomplished that. Uh, I think I'm far, um, so, so much further along than I was last year at this time. I mean, just being able to get the team reps, as you said, being able to move more, um, take care of my whole body and just focus on everything and not just my leg. Uh, it's a huge difference. After mandatory minicamp wraps up tomorrow, the Cowboys are a little over a month away from the start of training camp in Oxnard, California. And the Texas A&M baseball team is all set for the College World Series in Omaha. This marks the program's first appearance at the CWS since 2017 and their seventh overall. Four local players from the greater San Antonio area are on the roster and they'll play their first game Friday at 1 p.m. against Oklahoma. We'll hear from the team coming up this afternoon in sports at 6. Two strikes, man, at second. Justin Horn was a little upset.
best odds to win. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how they do. Yeah. Cautious Thanks, optimism. Andrew. Father's Day right around the corner, and if you're looking for a gift idea, why not a grill? They can be very expensive, though, and they're useful for years, however. Coming up today at 5, 12 inch size Marilyn Moore shares Consumer Reports top picks for grilling season 2022. Several states are now grappling with the results of key primary races last night, especially in South Carolina, where Republican voters soundly rejected one incumbent critic of former President Donald Trump, who voted to impeach him while also delivering a victory for another candidate who was sometimes critical of the former president. But last night's results indicate that President Trump continues to have a great influence on GOP voters. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more from Washington. In South Carolina this morning, Congresswoman Nancy Mace celebrating victory over her Trump-backed primary opponent, Katie Arrington. I didn't get any of those kinds of endorsements after I won the nomination. And so to, to see that unity come forth is a really big deal to keeping our, our party together. And Both Mace and fellow South Carolina incumbent Republican Representative Tom Rice drawing former President Trump's ire after criticizing his role in the deadly January 6th insurrection. Trump making it a personal mission to oust them from Congress. Unfortunately for the patriots of South Carolina, you currently have two atrocious rhinos. They're bad people in the House. But Rice, who, unlike Mace, also voted to impeach Trump for his role in the Capitol attack, was forced to defend that decision to voters in his deep red district for months. And last night, Rice facing a stinging defeat in his primary to Trump's preferred candidate, Russell Fry. I had hoped that it would, the situation would be reversed, but again, this seat doesn't belong to me, it belongs to the voters. And over in Texas, a big win for Republicans. In a special election to fill a vacant House seat, GOP candidate Myra Flores flipping a heavily Latino and historically Democratic House district near the U.S.-Mexico border, chipping away at the slim Democratic majority in the House. Flores taking a hardline stance on issues like border security earning the support of Texas Governor Greg Abbott and even billionaire Elon Musk, who says he voted for Flores in the primary. And one of the biggest prizes for the Trump MAGA wing of the Republican Party came last night in Nevada. Trump-backed candidates for U.S. Senate and for the Secretary of State won their primaries in that state. The candidate for Secretary of State campaigned saying he would not have certified President Joe Biden's 2020 election victory in that state. Jake O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. Well, Brittany Griner's detention in Russia has been extended once again. According to Russian state news agency, Griner will be held there until at least Jan uh, July 2nd as she awaits to go on trial. The U.S. basketball star was arrested back in February. She was accused of drug smuggling after officials found a vape pen in her bag. Still remains unclear what exactly the substance in the vape was. It's typical of Russian courts to extend detention repeatedly until the trial, and it's already happened a number of times for Brittany Griner. The U.S. federal officials have officially classified her as, quote-unquote, wrongfully detained, and say they are working to get her home. What well, has been one year since this moment in Geneva. President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin shaking hands in their historic meeting. A spokesperson for the Kremlin says returning to the hopeful spirit of that summit, it is impossible, though continued communications is essential, saying a new format of communication between Russia and the United States will need to be based on, quote, principles of mutual respect, the indivisibility of security, consideration of mutual concerns and mutual benefit, end quote. More than $1 billion in COVID relief money lost to fraudulent activity, apparently. That's according to the Department of Justice. Officials say the Justice Department's efforts to investigate the fraud cases have resulted in criminal charges against nearly 1,500 people. Those cases cover more than $1.1 billion in losses as of March 2022. That's along with 2,300 individuals and entities under civil investigation for fraud involving more than $6 billion in loans, the majority of which came from that Paycheck Protection Program. Meta has announced two new safety features targeting teens on Instagram. The company says the first initiative will hopefully nudge teens away from harmful content. Now these nudges are actually notifications. Meta says they're gonna pop up with suggestions for teens 
who keep on looking at the same types of content on Instagram's Explore section. They're hoping the notifications will steer teens away from the harmful content and then encourage them to explore new topics. Meta plans to launch this on Instagram later this summer. Wall Street watchers say they expect the Federal Reserve will increase interest rates by about three quarters percent later today, all in an effort to help fight inflation. So in May, the Fed boosted rates by a half point, something the agency hasn't done in more than 20 years. At that time, the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, said additional hikes were likely to continue until officials say inflation was at an appropriate level, which clearly, if you saw last month's report, it was not. Some economic analysis, well, they predict another three quarter point increase next month. And speaking of inflation, the massive increase in the cost of airfare, domestic ticket prices rising 47%. So where could you find huge savings in the fall and winter time? Scott Keyes monitors that on flight deals and he says summer deals are, eh, they're gone. And now is the time though to secure your fall and winter deal. Flights on July 1st through 8th from Los Angeles to Maui are $725 round trip, but flights from LA to Maui on September 1st through 8th, just $161 round trip. That's a big difference, yeah. wow. Key says some fall travelers could see discounts of up to 80%, but you're, if you're able to get away right now, you may find that your dollars are worth much more, especially over in Europe. Compared to the Euro, the US dollar right now has appreciated 15% as compared to last year. All right, so summertime means more fun in the sun, but it also is important to keep the kids hydrated if they're gonna be outdoors, especially in some of the record-breaking heat that we've seen lately. Local health officials say parents should not wait until a child is thirsty to make sure they have something to drink. They should be drinking water throughout the day. And if you have a child that isn't a fan of water, you can mix a little bit of juice into the water, but make sure it's still mostly water. Make sure they avoid the sugary drinks and do your best to avoid caffeine. So for little ones, babies six months and under, they're gonna be mostly on breast milk or formula, but you can introduce some water about four to eight ounces with them. One to three year olds, we're looking for about four cups of water a day. Four to eight is about five cups. And then seven, eight and older, um, we're gonna be doing seven to eight cups. So there are four big things to keep in mind, time, exposure, sunscreen, and hydration. Health officials say the best time to have your kids outside first thing in the morning and in the evening, try to avoid those afternoon hours. All right, speaking of afternoon hours, what did we get up to yesterday? Did we hit triple digits? We did. Oh, yet another day of triple digits, but not today. I think we're going to avoid it. You look at that scene outside, it looks like there's some rain there in the atmosphere. We haven't seen a lot. A couple sprinkles here and there across the city of San Antonio, but the big story there, a lot of clouds. Clouds are keeping the temperatures down. We're in the mid-80s right now. At this time, last several days, we've been in the 90s, so that you, you can see the change. Uh, let me show the high temperatures across the country today. High pressure is really going to ramp up the numbers in places like St. Louis, Chicago, Cleveland. Some of the hottest numbers they've seen for this time of year in a long, long time. Not only that, they've got a heat index to contend with a lot of humidity out there. The cool stuff continues to be up around Seattle and Boise, where they'll ha have highs today in the 60s and 70s. Uh, just incredible weather up there here in Texas. We're still feeling heat, but it's right on the edge of this ridge of high pressure that we have a little disturbance working in the South Texas. And uh, that's why we're seeing this cloud cover and even a few very light showers still seeing some light returns working their way up in the Kendall County. So that's probably a few sprinkles starting to show up also in parts of Wilson County and working its way north into Guadalupe County, a few showers and even here around San Antonio. Again, can't rule out a few sprinkles. We do know that temperatures are going to stay below that 100 degree mark, but with humidity the way it is, heat indices will probably jump up at least close to 100, if not a little bit above. So heads up there. Uh, we'll continue to see, again, those warm numbers. At 98, the forecast high, again, here in San Antonio. We'll talk about the extended forecast, which, yes, does include more heat, but will it ever subside, at least a little bit? That's coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. A local teen using his passion for STEM to reach his goals. We're going to introduce you to our latest great grad still ahead.
number one, these are your top headlines from Cheddar News. Meta rolling out some new safety measures for teens, saying it's giving parents more control. Instagram's nudge feature will encourage teens to switch to a different topic if they've repeatedly looked at the same type of content. It's all part of Meta's effort to calm scrutiny over children and teen safety on the platform. Meanwhile, Coinbase is laying off 1,100 employees, or about 18% of their workforce. That is, the value of crypto continues to plummet. CEO Brian Armstrong warning of prolonged economic downturn. At Coinbase's stock down 80% this year, and 80 85% since their initial public offering back in April 2021. And airline reservations down about 2.3% in the month of May. That's according to a new Adobe Digital Index report. At the same time, fares were up 30% from May of 2019. That's largely due to escalating fuel prices, labor shortages, and pent-up demand from the pandemic. U.S. consumers have also spent about $37 billion so far this year. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. He is a science fair winner who built his own car, and he's a chief in technical design in Formula One in schools. All right, so today we want to introduce you to our great graduates from Southside ISD, Dylan Bazan. He's ready to jump into the career field right after graduation. Don't overthink what you're doing. If you love what you're doing and you feel passionate about it, just go for it. Wise words from a top student. I really believe anything he wants to do, he, he is uh, very capable of doing and excelling in it. One of the goals Dylan wanted to achieve was build a car. So he did it and he won the science fair because of it. Like aerodynamics, it goes so well with the science fair and the topic and like STEM especially. So I did that and I was able to design my own car on like on CAD renderings and I had, at eighth grade, which was pretty cool. And I, was, I also had like an engineering class at the time, so I was able to work on it a little bit more, but still it was fun. And I was able to design my own car and then I had to fabricate it. I had my uncle fabricate it, he fabricated it, and then me and my dad built it, I put it together. Now he is fascinated with science and obviously STEM, and he finds his motivation in his family. In life, I think my mom, like my parents. I know it sounds probably cliche, but I mean, it's I, I see what they do, and they know they've done so much for me, and I really want to see if I can do something for them and for like my future and my family's future and everything like that. So I think that's kind of like my driving force is to do that. Dylan spends his free time researching and preparing to pass the necessary exams for his future career. And he also helps out hands on with his parents business. Uh, very motivated. Uh, it's almost he's on self drive, uh, which is really awesome to see. You can see there's a foundation there that uh, that uh, keeps him going. And also at the same time, he has a curiosity and uh, he tries everything. Dylan goes above and beyond for all of his endeavors, especially business. And after graduation, he hopes to be a top tier entrepreneur. I'm gonna try to get my real estate license. So I've been do looking at some videos and doing some things and trying to study and figure out exactly what you know the requirements are. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. All right, taking a live look out of the Alamo City. 87 now. It's cooler than what we've seen the couple last couple days. This is, this is really different. Mm -hmm. um, let's enjoy it while we can. I agree. Uh, we'll take all the clouds we can get at this point. It's pretty much a one day thing. I mean, things are going to warm back up tomorrow. Uh, but at the moment, we're sitting in the mid 80s. The high temperature actually we achieved a couple hours earlier when there was a bit more sun, 88. Uh, 80 was a low this morning. That's all we got down to. So because of cloud cover and wind this morning, it just it didn't cool down at all. 107 is the record set back in 1998. Thankfully, that is not in jeopardy today. In fact, we're going to stay below 100 degrees. We also have got some dust headed our way tomorrow. We'll talk about it coming up. I was driving in this morning mm -hmm. and I counted five raindrops. Whoa. Fell on my windshield. So I got to ask, Justin, how bad are the drought conditions that we're seeing? Oh, they're, they're really bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's I not a good situation. I was hoping it was an omen of what was to come today, mm. but no. Well, no. Just five. I, that's about how many I think we have been reported around the city. It wasn't, it wasn't much. It is not going to help our drought situation. Not much I can tell you. But if we can just keep temperatures down for a day or so with some cloud cover, I mean, it helps a little bit, uh, and uh, we'll take it. it it's, uh, it's a one-day thing, as I said, because I think by tomorrow, clouds are shifting back out, and we're back near 100 again. Uh, we got to talk about the dust, though, Saharan dust. Now, this comes through every year. We've seen it for most of this week.
but by tomorrow it's really going to thicken up some so the concentrations will pick up and uh, we, we want to make people aware because it can affect air quality and if you are your lungs are sensitive this is something that may affect you and it does get to some people sinus wise too so uh, just know that tomorrow there will be more dust in the atmosphere it'll be hazy that goes for thursday and friday if you'll remember this dust travels all the way from africa from the saharan desert gets lifted way up in the atmosphere and travels all the way across the atlantic ocean and then uh, we see some of it here usually in texas and florida kind of the two states that really uh, feel it uh, but it also keeps hurricanes and tropical storms from developing. So it, it, there are some good and bad that come with it, uh, but we are again going to see some bigger concentrations coming up tomorrow. Okay, let's talk about the threat for, you know, five or six sprinkles as Ursula uh, 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 talked about. We, we're seeing some of those late returns working through right now, and this is what that equates to, just a few sprinkles here and there. Some of that moving up into Kendall County, seeing a little bit here across Bear County at this hour. It's not going to be much, but we are seeing the thicker clouds associated with this. And that has kept temperatures in the mid 80s for now, 85 degrees, 87 stints and 88 at Kelly. And at this pace, we should not get up to the 100 degree mark, probably some mid 90s, mid to upper 90s today. Still seeing some gusty winds too out of the south southeast, anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. And you see that cloud cover that has been working through. There's more of it that is uh, going to have to work its way through Bear County. So we should stay mostly cloudy for a while longer. Now, as you get out west, there is more sun. You've had the Eagle Pass in Del Rio, seeing quite a bit more sun and temperatures are higher there as a result. 84 Canyon Lake, it is up to 90 in New Braunfels, 87 stints in 90 Castroville, 89 and mostly cloudy right now in Hondo. Dew points are elevated, so the heat index is going to be there. It feels pretty sticky outside, and I don't think that'll change much as we get into the afternoon. So if we do get up to mid to upper 90s, which I think we'll get close somewhere 95 to 98 this afternoon, depending on the clouds, the heat index is still going to be up close to 100, maybe a little bit above. So just a heads up, if uh, do plan to be outside, don't be fooled because that humidity will get to you. Uh, the satellite picture there, once again, you see some of those showers coming through and we'll put in a 10% chance of rain through the afternoon for one or two sprinkles or a light shower. And then that moves north and clouds clear out. We'll see clouds briefly again tomorrow morning, but more sun by tomorrow afternoon. We showed you the temperatures a little bit earlier across the country. It really is impressive. Now, these are the forecast high temperatures, but places like St. Louis, Chicago, Cleveland, all seeing some potential record highs today as high pressure is really cranking up the numbers across the eastern half of the country. And then almost all week, the cool stuff has been across the Pacific Northwest where they've been sitting some record lows. We've been feeling the heat, that's for sure. And this high pressure is going to wobble back to the west a little bit in the coming days. So our, our temperatures are actually going to come up some more, I think, as we get into tomorrow and uh, Friday and into the weekend. Uh, there is that ridge of high pressure again, moves west some and then basically sticks around through the weekend and into next week. So it takes away rain chances and really uh, brings the heat in. Meantime, in the tropics, uh, we do have a hurricane out in the eastern Pacific that's moving away from land and then this system which may develop uh, into something here in the coming days but it is super disorganized right now and it's running into some land here uh, around Central America so there's only a 30 percent chance of development if it does develop it's going to move north and then probably west into Mexico or at least the moisture associated with it so it doesn't look like we'll get any benefits from that 101 tomorrow 100 Friday 100 Saturday 101 Sunday and probably some triple digits going into next week. If you look way down the line, some of the extended computer models, there are maybe some cooler temperatures by the middle part of next week. We'll see. But uh, in the meantime, the weekend the promises to be plenty hot. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Just about 1255, 87 degrees out. All right, Jen and Fiona are standing by. They have huge smiles on their faces. <laughs> oh, you know sign. why? Because, you know, it's summer. Everybody loves grilling. Mm -hmm. Father's Day is mm -hmm. coming up. And you may look be at this. wondering what this is, but this right here will totally change your burger game. And Ooh. we're going to tell you how. And it's also a great little Father's Day yes, gift. If you haven't got one. <laughs> Not that I haven't got one, but yes. just saying. <laughs> we'll share that a little bit later, but from burgers. To tacos, Leo Davila from Sticks and Stone is here, and tell me what you have here. Yeah, yeah. so you know, this is my take on tortillas. Um, this is actually our big red infused tortillas. So everybody's nice. Sunday, big red and barbacoa. We figured, why not? Let's throw a big red into the masa and let's make a great tortilla with it. I mean, why not, right? <laughs> All right, we're gonna make those tacos in a bit. Thank you, Leo. 
Man, get ready for this giveaway. We are going to tell you how you can win $50,000 and a trip to space camp. Awesome. So stick around yes. for that. Yes, and if you're looking to plan a road trip, we're making it easier than ever, sharing a new app in the Texas Hill Country. And if you have little ones, you can also make it out there. And we didn't forget dessert today. In fact, we are going to share with you some allergen-friendly desserts and of course we're gonna make some special items for pride month yes and do you have any tips if you go traveling is there a habit that you do every time yeah something that you make sure you yes. have to do when you travel by plane train automobile boat yes. doesn't matter let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter all that more when we continue in a few minutes Right now on KSAT.com, San Antonio, not just a culturally diverse city, it's also filled with a number of different landscapes that are great for exploring. All right, so the city actually ranking number 36 on the list of best cities for hiking. All this in a study from Lawn Star. There are plenty of options for people looking to enjoy the great outdoors, including trails at Eisenhower, Friedrich Wilderness, and McAllister Park. You can see a list of all the trails in our area by checking out ksat.com and today might be your day to do that do that might not be the bad. only day <laughs> don't be like the the gift there where that guy's falling in the river <laughs> see that uh, okay uh, yes uh, we're going to see more cloud cover today that'll keep temperatures down some into the 90s and then we're back in the triple digits next several days with some added dust in the atmosphere Thursday and Friday could see a sprinkler or two today not out of the question uh, otherwise still back to the summertime summer like heat guys all right. We've been discussing that that little device that uh, Fiona yes. and Jen was holding. The that perfect burger. It, it smushes down. It, it well, don't don't kill, oh, kill their thunder away. over okay. here. Either way, we wish everyone out there. Well, me this is my last day on the noon. Have a happy Father's Day. Have the best burgers. But for now, that is it for the news at noon. SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Hello, happy Wednesday. People are visiting our beautiful city here in Market Square. Good afternoon. I'm Jen Tobias Dresky. And I'm Fiona Gorstiz. Well, as you saw, folks, of course, mm -hmm. visiting town and traveling for the summer by plane, train, automobile, boat, ship, whatever. <laughs> okay, but when you travel, Okay, do you have any particular habits that you do or that you need to yes. make sure is happening in your little travel world mm -hmm. when you That when you habit go? that every, you have to mm -hmm. do every time. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Okay, well, a really long time ago, I, <clears throat> the airline lost my luggage on the way to Europe and I didn't have clothes for four days. Oh my gosh. Four That's days. A nightmare. Yes, 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 it, it was a nightmare. <laughs> so ever since then, I make sure I pack as many clothes as I can fit, especially underwear, socks, things like that, uh, into a duffel. Yes. And that comes with me on the outgoing. I still check a suitcase with other things. Yes. But then on the way home, I throw all that into that suitcase. Smart. It can take its time. I don't care if yeah. it's like a week late. When it comes back, I'm home, all right? And then I can pack all the stuff that yeah. maybe I bought yeah. for souvenirs yes. in that Give one. yourself some room for mm -hmm. the uh, souvenirs. Yes. I like them. What about you? Um, I do the Ziploc bags mm -hmm. just to pack everything as tight as I can. Two kiddos, you know, to make yes. sure that they have everything. No leaks. Yes, so mm -hmm. I always do that. And then, oh, and I'll also always have trash bags in there. So the maybe ATB bags, just in case. Yes. Where do you put Like your... for the laundry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So okay. let <laughs> us know what your travel hacks are or things that you need to do when you travel at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter. And you may see some of those ideas later on in the show. All right. Well, you may have heard of Big Red Beer, Big Red Shakes. Well, it was only a matter of time until someone made Big Red Tortillas. <laughs> yes, here in San Antonio, Barbacoa and Big Red, those are staples many of us grew up with. So it's no surprise, creative local chef Leo Davila from Sticks and Stone has created this amazing combination. Leo, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Nice to be Thank here. Thank you, guys. by the way, for <laughs> yes. doing this. Oh, yeah, yes. of course. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have to, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we take uh, heirloom red masa and then we basically just sub out the water. Mm -hmm. So we use big red instead of the water. Everybody comes up and is like, is it dye? Is it food coloring? I mean, I guess yes, but not really on our end, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then just salt. And then from there, you know, we, we press them, we cook them, and now we're just gonna warm them back up. We want a beautiful spots. A lot of people think this is burnt. Um, this isn't, this is just letting you know our tortillas all the way cook through. Ooh, that's and my really, favorite really part nice. when they yeah. have that. Yeah. And they a little bit heartier. So we're doing two things. One is like a nice heavy savory meal. Um, every Sunday growing up, we had big red and barbacoa. And then we 
we also had watermelon and pecan. So mm -hmm. the two dishes we're going to be working today is kind of like that happy marriage of the two. Okay. Um, so how do we get started yes. here? What do yeah, we need? so we already pressed these out. Mm -hmm. These are going. Jen, barbacoa is already cooked. Mm, this is good. ours. You know, we, we cook it low and slow for 12 to 24 hours, just depending on the beef cheeks. Ours is all beef cheeks, no fillers. Then from there, we let it cool overnight. Uh, we peel off that fat cap so we can control the fat. I know a lot of people think barbacoa is really, really greasy and fatty. Um, so we just don't want to make sure we're giving serving people fat. We want to serve them beef. So that's getting cooked out right there. And we'll just really work, work on the plating. So Fiona, okay. on your side, yes. um, again, my grandpa always had watermelon. We had a pecan tree in the back. So what we're going to do is just our take on like a summer watermelon salad. All right. Um, it's going to have a couple of This is one of the, like, the new things. Yeah, this is new to the menu. Mm -hmm. uh, going to be introduced tomorrow. We're actually closed the day. We're here with y'all. And then we have a private catering tonight. Um, so tomorrow for Taco Thursday, we'll have these available as well as our, our uh, summer salad as well. I like well. the Taco Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Taco, everybody does Taco right. Tuesday, so we're doing Taco <laughs> Thursday. Um, from there, so you have red and yellow watermelon. So yellow watermelon, the flesh is yellow. It's a little bit sweeter. Um, and then we're going to pair that with some cantaloupe. And then we have a beautiful pomegranate vinaigrette that we're going to mix all that lettuce into. Um, and then just kind of top it up with some fun stuff. So yeah, so from there, Jen, so that's our pesto. So mm -hmm. my mom, my mom just does not like cilantro, does not like onions. But how can you not have that iconic green going on your barbacoa tacos? Yes, so yes. we do something a little different. Ours is a house pesto made with pecans, pepitas, a little bit of Parmesan and queso fresco cheese. So that's going to go right on top. That sounds amazing. You're always looking to create these different combinations. Yeah, I noticed with you, my, right? my team and yes. I, you know, they, we, we all have like this sweet and savory palette. Um, so everything that we do just kind of mirrors off of that. I know a lot of people look at it and think, oh, well, these are crazy components. Yeah. But just when you come to the restaurant, trust us. If you want the same, then go to a million different restaurants that are amazing, <laughs> like that. that do the same thing. Yes. If you want something a little bit different, then come and check us out and hang just out with us. You. <laughs> yeah, so then we're going to go a little spice so people mm -hmm. love that horrible salsa right there, right this on one? top. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And then we're going to finish that with the queso fresco. And then, you know, we believe in 100% yield. So we fabricated out the watermelon. Well, now you have that rind. Most people throw it away, throw it in a compost. We're actually take it, peel it, and we pickle it. So we're going to put a pickled watermelon rind on top. It's going to have a lot of reminiscence of like chamoy. And then the spring mix that you put on, Fiona, is yep. just like I spinach, yep. a little bit of frise, a little bit of arugula. We're going to top it with cucumbers and carrots. And then that beautiful red thing right there is watermelon radish. Ooh. So it's gonna taste, have all the properties so of a good. radish. Um, it's just gonna have a beautiful color pattern of a watermelon and give it some of that, um, you know, color Great pop, color. if you will. Yes, and look then the at pepitas, that. we love pepitas. Those are roasted with just salt and pepper. Really super simple in an oven for about 15 minutes. Gotta wash them, watch them so they don't burn. Um, and that's gonna give it a nice nutty full flavor right on top. And then the jam, just do a nice little circle and you're okay. good to go. So tell me about this jam. So the jam, so it's a house strawberry and big red jam. Uh, same thing, we do a house strawberry jam. We just wanted to reinforce that flavor of it all. Not partnering it too sweet, not mm -hmm. going too savory. Everything just kind of works with the fattiness of the big red and the barbacoa and all comes together for a complete meal. Well, I have to take a bite. So while I do that, let's mm -hmm. talk about, you have a new brunch hours, right? Yeah, so July 2nd, a lot of people have been asking mm -hmm. us about brunch on Saturdays. So July mm -hmm. 2nd will be our first Saturday brunch to partner along with our Sunday brunch. So Sunday brunch is 10 to three. Um, Saturday is gonna be 12 to four. So we figure you go out Friday nights, hang out, have a few drinks, and you <laughs> wanna wake up for brunch a little later than we got you, we can take care of you on that front. I love it, and a deal for folks watching? Yeah, so you know, um, any teachers out there, you know, my mom's retired teacher, um, you know, I'm a culinary instructor as well as Chef Adrian and Chef Hunter with me here today. Um, it's summertime, y'all are bored at home, come out and eat with us, 10% off. And also anybody who mentions SA Live will receive 10% off Yay! as well. And where are you located so people know? Yeah, so we're in Leon Valley, more so Bandera and Wurzbach. Mm -hmm. We share the same complex as our good friend, Sorry Sorry. Uh, come out, check us out, check out our food, check out our Instagram, and I promise you won't be disappointed. All right, don't forget, just mention that you saw Chef Leo here on SA Live for 10% off your meal at Sticks and stone and for more information you can head over to salive.com click the as seen on sa live tab or scan that qr code on your screen that is amazing leo thank you Appreciate delicious it. <laughs> thank you well tacos of course are a great way to start off any road trip or maybe a snack as you're heading to your yeah. destination <laughs> both yes exactly but if you're looking for an easy way to plan a hill country getaway there's a new app created by business owners in the texas hill country that helps you plan your entire itinerary take a look A trip to Texas wine country sounds great, but when you have a family with two little ones, maybe you're wondering, how do I plan a trip so everyone has a great time? 
Today, the Vine app is helping the Castro family enjoy a weekend getaway. Co-founder Anita Ortiz Lepke, also co-owner of Stonewall Motor Lodge Inn, helped build the Vine. Spend less time researching and more time exploring is our tagline. It's absolutely a family friendly. Or it's not all about wine out here. Yes. We have the Pertinalis River right behind the hotel. Uh, LBJ State Park and his Texas White House is about a mile away. But there's an elephant preserve here too, right? There's an elephant preserve. It's about a, a couple of miles behind the hotel. You can actually take your kids out there and bathe the elephants. And they can make watercolor art with their trunks. And it's just quite the experience for families. So there's more to do out here than just wine. The Vine app helped the Castro family find lodging at Stonewall Motor Lodge Inn, which is a great place to teach kids a little history too. The Stonewall Motor Lodge is an old retro 1964 roadside motel that was built to house the Secret Service and the Press Corps when LBJ became president in the early 60s. And so we, a group of friends and family, bought the motel uh, about three years ago, renovated it, and it's just that classic roadside drive up to your room experience. That's all the trend now and, and we're fortunate. We're right in the middle of everything going on out here. Next stop, Yensky Orchards for a pick your own experience. Strawberries don't get any fresher than this straight off the vine. Right now you can come out and pick your own peaches and blackberries ahead of the fall season where pumpkins will emerge here. For lunch, Weston Pizza Co. was recommended. This eatery includes an outdoor patio, yard games, kid menu items, and well, who doesn't love pizza? To walk it off, the vine took them to Wild Seed Farms. Here you can find plants, flowers, trails surrounded by wildflowers, a winery, and for the kids, some peach ice cream. Along the way, some free activities include stopping by local playgrounds, enjoying the heart of the city, some fun photo opportunities, and then it's time to wind down back at Stonewall Motor Lodge Inn. Another trip laid out with help from the Vine Travel app. Yeah, very helpful app and then another place if you're a parent looking for a place to go maybe inside they have the science mill in Johnson City nice. it's kind of like a mini museum but just smaller yes, so another for yep, the kids exactly. very cool for more information on the Vine app all you have to do is head to our website salive.com and click on the as seen on SA live tab or just snap that QR code on your screen and another event happening, mm -hmm. if you're heading out to the Hill Country, it's happening in Stonewall. You can add this to your list uh, for a great time. Their sixth annual Peach Jamboree kicks off tomorrow through Saturday. Yes, there's a full list of events. Just head over to our website and click the As Seen on SA Live tab. Still ahead on SA Live, looking for a different kind of pet. The, the event this weekend where you can find some exotic animals and what you need to know before you go. But first, more food with a fun twist. Donut-shaped burgers, what's behind the different designs and how you can get a taste. We're cooking them up. It's all next on SA Live.